Thanks for tuning in to this week's news recap. Terra 2.0 is on the way. On Wednesday, Terraform Labs co-founder Do Kwan's plan to revive Terra was approved. The on-chain vote finished with 65.5% of the total in support. Only 13% voted against, while 21% abstained. In accordance with the plan, Terra will fork into a new chain without UST, the algo stablecoin that caused the collapse of the entire system. The current chain will be renamed Terra Classic, and the current native token will be called Luna Classic, or LUNC. As for the new chain, it will be called Terra, and will have a supply of 1 billion Luna used as the native token, which will be distributed amongst current Luna and UST holders, both pre-collapse and post-collapse. The distribution's goal is to make Terra a fully community-owned chain, tweeted Terra's official Twitter account. In that vein, neither the Terraform Labs, TFL, or the Luna Foundation Guard, LFG wallets, will receive any airdropped Luna tokens. The proposal allocates a large proportion of the token distribution to provide runway for existing Terra dApp developers and to align the interest of developers with the long-term success of the ecosystem, they added. The new blockchain will be launched today, Friday the 27th, as per the proposal. This moment will be called the genesis of the blockchain, and the new Luna tokens will be distributed accordingly. In other Terra-related news, South Korean authorities want to introduce more regulations around crypto exchanges. When exchanges violate rules, they should be held legally responsible to ensure that the market functions well without any troubles, said Representative Sung Il Jong of the ruling People Power Party. South Korean authorities are taking action to freeze assets from the Luna Foundation Guard, according to KBS, the country's nationwide broadcaster. They are asking exchanges to block LFG from withdrawing assets. However, as this request is not backed by law, it is not clear what these exchanges will do. YGG and Merit Circle DAO tussle over tokens. A few days ago, a member of the Merit Circle DAO made a proposal to remove the tokens promised to yield guild games for seed investment by refunding their initial contribution due to an alleged lack of help coming from YGG. In this way, the DAO hopes to terminate its financial obligations to YGG. For context, Yield Guild Games and YGG co-founder Gabby Dizon originally invested 175,000 USDC in Merit Circle at a price of 3.2 cents per token, giving them roughly 5.5 million MC tokens in total. The token is now trading at around $1, so the $175,000 investment is now worth more than $5 million. The proposal was made by a DAO member called Honey Barrel. The Merit Circle DAO needs seed investors who are adding value, they said in the government's proposal. They, YGG, are competitors who are only interested in extracting value and profit from the DAO, and their actions go against the ethical principles that Merit Circle upholds. After the accusations, YGG posted an official statement in response to Merit Circle's proposal, explaining that in September 2021, YGG entered into a simple agreement for future tokens, or SAFT, with Merit Circle LTD to participate in their seed investment round. There were no conditions in the SAFT that relate to value add services. It only called for the investment of capital, YGG said. YGG also pointed to many of the contributions they've made to Merit Circle, including introductions to multiple funds and angels during the seed round, support during negotiations, help obtaining media coverage, as well as governance and support to the Merit Circle operations team. We have always looked to be collaborative, not combative with our partners. This is the basis of strong partnerships, YGG said. As of today, no decision has been made and the Merit Circle DAO is still debating the topic. Scandal around Milady's creator causes price slump. Charlotte Fang, the founder of Milady's NFT, one of the most popular NFT projects of 2022 by volume, admitted to an association with a racist digital community, which appears to have led to a major drop in the Milady NFT price. Milady Maker is an NFT collectible created by Ramilla Collective. It is categorized as an anime-inspired NFT avatar project and consists of 9,691 unique digital items released in August 2021 on Ethereum. 
Last week, a DeFi developer under the pseudonym of 0xNGMI, or not going to make it, accused Charlotte Fang of being associated with MIA, an online racist community that spreads hate against Jews, Black people, homosexuals, and even women. Fang came clear on Twitter and admitted that he was indeed a MIA and that the accusations against him were accurate. Fang expressed his apologies for trying to hide his past and also tried to unlink Milady from Mia. Mia has nothing to do with Milady Maker and should stay that way, so I'll be stepping down from the team from here, he said. The price floor of the Milady project sank approximately 80% over the last seven days, from 1.2 ETH to 0.25 ETH, according to data from NFT price floor. That being said, the floor price fall of Milady's appears to be part of a bigger trend in crypto right now. For example, CryptoPunks hit a new year low in floor price of 45.58 ETH or around $85,000. Less than a year ago, it was trading at more than 120 ETH, which at the time was valued at almost $500,000. Uniswap reaches $1 trillion in lifetime volume. Uniswap hit a significant milestone this Tuesday. The decentralized exchange, or DEX, passed $1 trillion in cumulative trading volume over its lifetime, as announced on Twitter. Uniswap was initially built on Ethereum, but has since been deployed in Layer 2s and sidechains such as Optimism, Arbitrum, and Polygon, with plans of expanding to Gnosis Chain and Moonbeam Network. According to DeFi Llama, Uniswap is the second largest DEX in the cryptocurrency ecosystem by total value locked, with almost $6 billion of TVL. However, by trading volume, Uniswap is the largest DEX, followed by PancakeSwap. However, it is still way behind centralized exchanges such as Binance or FTX. According to CoinGecko, Uniswap had $1 million of trading volume in the past 24 hours, while Binance and FTX had $12 million and $2 million in daily trading volume over the same period. Despite the milestone, the Uniswap token has not been performing very well. It is currently trading at around $5.50. For context, a year ago, it hit an all-time high of $44.90. All DeFi tokens have been suffering large drawdowns. The DeFi Pulse Index, or DPI, which tracks a basket of DeFi tokens, is down 85% from its all-time high in May of 2021. Andreessen raises $4.5 billion for crypto investments. Despite the market downturn, Andreessen Horowitz, or A16Z, one of the largest crypto VCs, announced a new fund of $4.5 billion to invest in crypto and blockchain startups. Of that, $1.5 billion will go to seed investments and $3 billion to venture investments. This is the fourth crypto fund that the firm has raised, totaling over $7.6 billion in funds for Web3. According to a post by Chris Dixon, general partner at A16Z, they are going to use the funds to invest in promising Web3 startups at every stage. Dixon thinks we are now entering the golden era of Web3 and that blockchains will power the next major computing cycle. The current bear market didn't stop the fund from being raised. Bear markets are often when the best opportunities come about, when people are actually able to focus on building technology rather than getting distracted by short-term price activity, said Ariana Simpson, a general partner at A16Z to CNBC. Arthur Hayes avoids prison. Arthur Hayes, former BitMEX CEO, was sentenced to two years probation after being charged with violating the United States Bank Secrecy Act, stemming from his days as the CEO of BitMEX when he did not run the proper anti-money laundering laws required by the U.S. government to help prevent crime and corruption. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York found that Hayes and his co-founder, Benjamin Dello, were guilty of willfully failing to establish, implement, and maintain an anti-money laundering or AML program at BitMEX. Even though the charges faced by Hayes carried a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison, he managed to dodge incarceration and was sentenced to six months of home detention and two years of probation. In addition, he will have to pay a fine of $10 million. I deeply regret that I had a part in this criminal activity, said Hayes in the courtroom. Crypto takes main stage at Davos and in Oslo. Cryptocurrencies and digital assets were among the hottest topics discussed at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland. Looking to encourage wider and faster adoption, 
Plenty of crypto executives and representatives showed up at the meeting, such as Jeremy Allaire, CEO and co-founder of Circle Internet Financial. However, not everyone was in favor of crypto in Davos. Kristalina Georgieva from the IMF compared the case of UST to a pyramid scheme and said that Bitcoin may be a coin, but not money. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde said, cryptocurrencies are not currencies at all, during an interview for Radio Davos. On a funnier note, last Sunday, there was a stall offering free pizza to the meeting attendees to celebrate Bitcoin Pizza Day, the commemoration of the first purchase ever made with Bitcoin. Also this week, the Oslo Freedom Forum, which I had the honor of attending, organized by the Human Rights Foundation, brought together activists and Bitcoiners from around the world. The programming featured a full-fledged financial freedom track, which covered issues such as whether Bitcoin is compatible with democracy and included workshops which taught lessons such as how to download and use a Bitcoin wallet. I had the privilege of interviewing a Chinese distant artist, Bariu Cao, who has turned to NFTs to help evade the Chinese government's pervasive censorship regime. Overall, it was a fantastic week, as always, full of inspiring stories and innovative ideas on how to use technology to further the cause of human rights. Time for fun bits. Seth Green's NFT will not make prime time. Seth Green, an American actor and producer, suffered a phishing scam and was robbed of several NFTs. Among those was a bored ape, which was set to star in its own animated show. By the way, the NFT had its own name, Fred Simeon. However, as Green no longer has the commercial rights to this NFT, he is not able to make the show. The new holder of the digital asset, an anonymous collector who goes by Darkwing84, owns the commercial usage rights, according to Daniel Dubin, a tax and litigation attorney at Alston Bird LLP. In an interview with crypto entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, Green said, I bought that ape in July 2021 and have spent the last several months developing and exploiting the IP to make it into the star of this show. The news caught the attention of Preston Byrne, a tech lawyer, who said, the rules are not clear and that NFT platforms slash art sellers should know better and owe their users better terms than Yuga Lab has done with the BayYC collection. Thanks so much for joining us today. To learn more about Koi and the SEC's regulation of crypto, check out the show notes for this episode. If you're not yet subscribed to the Unchained Daily Newsletter, which comes out Monday through Friday, go to unchainedpodcast.com and sign up right on the homepage. Unchained is produced by me, Laura Shin, with help from Anthony Yoon, Daniel Ness, Mark Murdoch, Shashank, and CLK Transcription. Thanks for listening.